Good morning and welcome to Lexington Park Baptist Church. We're glad you've come to join us on this Sunday morning. Would you please stand and join us as we start out the service with Yes, I Will. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Say amen. amen. You may be seated. Uh, good to have everyone here. I want to welcome everyone. Welcome everyone online as well. Uh, welcome to Lexington Park Baptist Church where God is on the move. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. God's on the move. 
So listen to the word of the Lord. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2.20. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We're grateful that we can come worship you and exalt you. Lord, we know just as we've just sung that you are with us. And may we all say, yes, I will, to whatever you call us to do today. Lord, may we come here and may you inhabit the praise of your people. May you be glorified and exalted high in this place. Lord, may you speak to us as we open your word today. And Lord, may you be with all the moving parts. May we be blessed in just seeing all that you're doing in the life of this church and this community to build up your kingdom. And Lord, may we be grateful to be a part of it. Lord, I pray that as we've entered this place, Lord, that we will come and just leave everything behind. And Lord, we'll just prepare our hearts to receive what you would have us to receive. We'll have open minds. We'll have, uh, our souls will be refreshed. And Lord, we'll be grateful that we've come here because we'll know that we've come into the presence of the one true living God. I pray today that um, as we leave this place, we'll be better than as we entered it. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. And all of God's people said, amen. So for the life of the church, let's have our table talk. If you can get out your communicator. So we sit down as a family of God and we can talk about what's going on in the life of the family. So the first thing I want you to know is that Mobilize to Socialize is going really good. We're having like eight, nine, ten, ten men that meet over here at St. Innie's. We're doing it every other Friday this so that we catch people that have that other, not everybody has the same Friday off that works on base. So uh, Mobilize to Socialize will be over here at 8.30 if you want to join us. We'd love to have you there. Also, we're going to show The Chosen Season 4, Episode 1 and 2 here in this sanctuary on April 26th at 6 p.m. Snacks and child care will be provided thanks to the youth. If you didn't know that, tag you're it or CMT. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, there you go, man. So I'm sitting there reading that going, man, did some, I hope somebody coordinated that. I just did right now, see? So we're having this family table talk. So anyway, that will be provided. And any donations that you make will go to summer camp. So uh, anyway, more information to come if you need to contact the church office. Also, make sure you mark your calendars, May 19th, 2024, 4 to 8 p.m. Unless a long time, bring a potluck dish. We'll have the vision conference. More to come on that as we get there. But it's something you want to mark your calendars, please. I know it's an all-day event for the church, but please be a part of that. That's huge. You get to participate. It's not just us telling you what the vision is. It's your being a part of that vision. So come out and do that. Also, uh, a walk-through baby shower. We haven't done that in a while. Gonzo, I see you in the back. I don't know if they can see you, but we, we've got you back there. So baby's doing good? Yeah, are you doing good? Are you sleeping? Oh, he's, he's doing this. Yeah, okay. All right, so walk through baby shower for Noel and the baby. So if you can be here to see little baby Sakura, um, be here on the, the 28th. And what that means is you just bring a gift or, or a gift card or diapers or whatever you want to do. And we're going to go through the fellowship hall. It'll be cupcakes. You can congratulate the family. And in this case, because the baby came early, the baby's actually here now instead of, so that, that happened on that one. So please be a part of that. Vacation Bible School... Jill, come on up. You should be so excited. You should be running up here, right? You should be running up here because that's what's going to happen when the kids are here. Just, just, just work your way around. Yes. So we're going to, Jill is our VBS director. Let's hear it for Jill. Oh, she, just start talking. He'll get you. Um, so VBS this year is July 8th through 12th. And our theme is Breaker Rock Beach. So it is sort of a beach in Alaska. So we're going to have killer whales and seals. And we'll have fun beach stuff, but oh, wait, chilly wait, wait, beach wait, wait. stuff. She doesn't know this yet. And there's going to be, since it's cold beach water, there's going to be a challenge between the director and the pastor. We're going to have tubs up here with ice water and see who can stand in it the longest. <laughs> Let's think about the temperature of the office. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I would no. win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. So the challenge is on. It's game on. Then. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Um, I will not shave my head, though, if oh, I lose. That's OK. <laughs> All right. So it is the 8th to the 12th. And we do need volunteers. We need volunteers that will lead groups around. And then we need volunteers to lead each station. So starting next week, there will be sign-up sheets out there. Um, I have had some people already come forward. I appreciate that. Um, you can email me at the church if you want to try to get your slot in quick, if there's something in particular um, you'd like to do. And we will have 
preschool and elementary, so like I'll need arts and crafts for both. Um, and uh, the theme is transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so it's sort of how we can move forward when we live in a world that has such shifting sand. So I hope that all of you will find something that you want to do to help with VBS and sign up with me next week. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Macy Joy, come up here. Uh, <laughs> so graduate and professionals are, are meeting right after church. And what, tell them what you're teaching on. Ruthless elimination of hurry. Uh, so, is anybody in a hurry all the time? Yeah, the ruthless elimination. She almost said, I don't have time to teach this class, Dad. Sorry. Remember, anything you say at my house is subject for a sermon illustration, just so that goes for record. So anyway, uh, if, you want, if you're in that age bracket, you know, graduated high school up through about age 30, please join them right after church today. They're going to they're gonna meet and have that class elimination of what? Hurry. Of hurry. All right. Thank you. So a uh, last thing is the donation that we took up last week. First of all, I want to thank you. Um, if you weren't aware of that, uh, CJ and Katie Matthew Shalnetta got up and spoke about their ministry. It's a special needs camps that we run at, uh, at, our, at our summer camp. And so we're going to run that again this year for special needs. If you have a special needs child and know someone that needs that, uh, there's only so many slots. So if you're interested in that, contact the BCMD or see me if you don't know how to do that. The other thing is, though, because we told you their whole house was invaded by black mold, uh, she got very sick and actually had to resign initially, and she's been rehired to do this job now, um, but insurance doesn't cover that. So I want to be grateful to you all. This is the last day we're collecting at the end of service. If you see guys with the offering plates, again, that's going directly to them and to the special needs camp needs, all right? And then we have the, the boxes up front for your normal offering. But for that, if you want to give at the end of service, you can. We've already exceeded our goal of $1,000. I'm not going to tell you how much. So, pray, pray, yeah, praise the Lord. You can go ahead and do that. Yes, amen. So, with the, last week being the first announcement, I just want to say this. I'm impressed, and I'm blessed by you, and I'm grateful at the generosity of this church when there's a need that people step up, and I, I, they were so blessed. I saw CJ at the men's conference yesterday, and he came up and gave me a big hug uh, because we did send them the initial $1,000 to pay off of the purifier that they put on their credit card. They were very grateful for that, and he just, he, he was grateful. He thanked me. So I haven't seen Katie yet, but uh, Katie cries. CJ doesn't cry, but that's okay, you know. So anyway, with that, I just want to thank you for that. With that, let's greet one another. Tell each other you're good to see each other today. Tell somebody you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Can everybody return their seats, please? James Vallandigham, have you come on up here? All right, if we can go to our missionary moment uh, of the day. So you know that we, uh, we uh, have about 5,000 missionaries we send around the world. And so today we're going to focus on Steve and Jen Hagen. They're reaching the Asian Pacific Rim people groups. Um, and we usually list it that way because they're probably in an area where we can't tell you where they're actually at. But what they've asked us to do is pray that the gospel would take root and transform lives in this area and the places of people that are without faith in Jesus Christ. So um, I know that they do. One of their areas of target we can't talk about is the Philippines. So we can specifically pray for that area if you want to and then pray for them as they continue to reach out and be catalyst in this area, planting churches in areas that need evangelical movement in the Pacific Rim. So let's pray for the Hagen family today. Lord, we just love you and we thank you for the Hagens. Lord, thank you for people and their young, this young family that's willing to give their entire life for you to go to a foreign land and, 
and leave all behind. Lord, I just pray that you bless them as they travel and as they try to build churches in all this area. Lord, as it sounds like he's probably one of the coordinators, Lord, I just pray for him specifically. Uh, Lord, that you will bring people to, to come alongside him to go out into these areas and, and be ministers of the gospel and train the natives to actually lead the churches. And Lord, I just pray that uh, we are grateful and thankful that we can be a part of this as we give a part to the cooperative program, sending missionaries around the world. Again, we ask you to bless the Hagans and all our missionaries in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. And now James Vlanningham is going to read our scripture of the day. Morning, church. I'm going to be reading from Micah 3, 1 through 8. Then I said, now listen, leaders of Jacob, you rulers of the house of Israel. Aren't you supposed to know what is just? You hate good and love evil. You tear off people's skin and strip their flesh from their bones. You eat their flesh of my people after you strip their skin from them and break their bones. You chop them up like flesh for the cooking pot, like meat in a cauldron. Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face to them at the time because of the crimes they have committed. This is what the Lord says concerning the prophets who lead my people astray who proclaim peace when they have food to sink their teeth into, but declare war against the one who puts nothing in their mouths. Therefore, it will be night for you without visions. It will grow dark for you without divination. The sun will set on these prophets, and the daylight will turn black over them. Then the seers will be ashamed, and the diviners disappointed. They will all cover their mouths, because there will be no answer from God. As for me, however, I am filled with power by the Spirit of the Lord, with justice and courage to proclaim to Jacob his rebellion and to Israel his sin.
All right, please stand and join us as we continue worship with You Are a Holy God. Consuming fire, your robe in majesty, bright shining as the sun. Your ways are not our ways, your thoughts are high above. You are the fountain, Lord, of mercy, truth, and love. And we cry, Holy, Holy is the Lord God most Truth and love, and we cry. Home. 
I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed.
You may be seated. Please join me in, in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for this time of worship with you. And Lord, just as a family now, we, we come before you, seeking your face. Lord, whatever concerns we may have, just in this moment of reflection, Lord, may we cast all our cares upon you. May we place our burdens upon you. Lord, may we confess inwardly our sins to you. And Lord, may we come with you with humble hearts, ready to serve, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So Lord, whatever's on your people's hearts right now, as we have this moment of silence, Lord, may you hear our hearts and hear our inner being as we speak to you. Lord, as the song we just sang reminds us that whether we're having a good day or a bad day, you're, we're still blessed. And Lord, may we be grateful for your many blessings. May we never forget to count them. May we be mindful uh, of people around this world that do not have this opportunity to worship you, either because they've not heard the gospel or because they're in places that um, there's war or there's fear. We're mindful of the conflict in Israel, mind, mindful of the conflict in Ukraine. We know to, uh, Taiwan is uh, a threat every single day. We see the, the, just the total discord and disarray of places like Haiti. Lord, we are just reaching out to you right now for those regions of your world that you created. Asking for you to intervene in these areas and give wisdom Bring your provisions and bring the gospel. And Lord, now we pray for our own lives. In the midst of our chaos, may you move. May we know that you're God. May we be mindful that even in the Garden of Gethsemane, you prayed, not my will, God, Father, but yours. Lord, may we fully submit to your will. May we know that there's no better place but in the middle of your will, in the center of it all. So Lord, I pray that your will will prevail over all of our lives, whatever that may be, the crosses we have to carry, the burdens we have to face, the battles we have to fight, the victories we need to declare. God, I pray in this moment, in this day, that you reign supreme over your people and we submit to your will. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. So as we're at this time of our offertory, just want to remind everybody, thank you. Remember, the plates that will be at the back doors with the deacons are for the Matthews family. But if you want to give uh, to the church, we'll have our offering plates, our offering boxes here, and the black box in the foyer. If you're our guest today, there's a detachable portion of your program. If you can fill that card out and please put that in the offering plate um, or the box, the black box, we would love to know that you're here with us today. Again, if you're our guest, there's a gift bag for you too out in the foyer. Thank you for being here with us today. Have the handbells come on up. And then here in a minute, Greg Mabry's going to read our offertory prayer, our scripture, and our prayer today for us. Our uh, giving scripture today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 through 20. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for uh, this day, Lord. Thank you for... Um, your provisions for us, Lord, and, and all your many blessings, Lord. We just ask that you take this time to um, uh, be with each one here, Lord, as they give, uh, as, they fell as, as they fell led, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be with Pastor Chris as he uh, gets ready to preach his sermon, Lord. I ask that you give him the words to speak and that you would open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive it. Uh, let him speak boldly uh, your truths, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
you can get your Bibles out, let's raise the Word of God high. Say this with me. This is my Bible, God's holy Word. I'll make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen, and God bless you. Today we're going to continue our 40-day journey with Jesus. We started last week. Um, it's four weeks of 40 days with Jesus, a spiritual journey for you. How are you walking with Jesus? How has those 40 days impacted your life? Last week we looked at all the scriptures from Moses up to the prophets and to Jesus' ministry as he served for three years, actually ministering to us, doing all kinds of things. Then the three days, the death, burial, and resurrection, and then 40 days on this earth where his whole job was to convince people forever that he is risen. That probably will not be the last time I say that. All right, so as we come to know that, we learn that from Romans uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 8, we looked at the primary focus of us is the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. If we place our faith in that, and then we believe what happened after that is he walked on the earth 40 days, and we see in that text that I just quoted you, for 1 through 8, go read 1 Corinthians 15 if you weren't here for that sermon, that what we were looking at is that Jesus appeared to Clepus, Jesus appeared to James, Jesus appeared to the to the 11. Jesus appeared to other disciples and to 500 people all at one time. Wow, we know he also appeared to John. We know he appeared to, appeared to Mary. There are so many other, and then we ultimately know he appeared to Paul on the Damascus road. And then we know that he appeared to those that were on the Emos road, at least two disciples, and then he gathered with other disciples and broke bread with them. The convincing evidence demands a verdict that he is risen. So if those 40 days prove that, now I want you to know, Jesus didn't do miracles. Jesus wasn't going around in those 40 days. His one thing was to compel us to go with the message of the gospel. Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. For 2,000 years, that remains our message. If you really look at our society today, and by the way, it's a mess. Did you know if we sit in this room and we, if I ask you, Almost three quarters of all Americans, I don't care what your political affiliation are, you don't think we're on the right track. Things just don't seem right. They'll tell you your pocketbook's good, but you'll go, things just don't seem the right when I go buy eggs and milk and gas and other things, right? Nobody else feels that way. Maybe, you're, maybe, maybe our church is so special, we're that 25% that thinks everything's okay. Right? Listen, we don't want to har- harbor on that. We want to we look at the positive, and the positive is this. The answer is the gospel. Jesus, an eternal perspective of things is the answer. The fact that this world is not our home. The fact that, that no matter how good we may have it here or bad we may have it here, it's all about Jesus. And if we make that our focus, when we, whatever we do for the glory of God, whether we pay more for those eggs and milk or more for the gas or whatever our political ideologies or persuasions may be, may be or maybe we get fired up because we don't, we don't believe in abortion and all these other movements that are in our culture. And then we're also looking at places like Haiti and we're looking at Israel, 300 missiles. Could you imagine 300 missiles coming on Washington, D.C.? I can't even fathom that. I, I can't. Even, even being a soldier, I know I was corrected last week that Navy and the Marines rule in this room. I know that, all right? But as an Army guy, I can't even fathom that. I can't fathom even those of us that may have been in war. I mean, that's just, that's just unbelievable. And so we, we can get caught up in that. Jesus tells us, this world's going to have trouble. But listen, fear not, I've overcome the world. So no matter what happens in our world today, these 40 days, Jesus was establishing one thing. Not that everything's going to be perfect in your life. You can come to know Jesus, and I'm going to tell you, your life will not be perfect. You can come to know Jesus, that's not going to fix your checkbook. You can come to know Jesus, it's going to be a struggle still to conquer some sins in your life. It's going to be still problems out in the world, but you have Jesus. We have the promise of Jesus. So we're going to talk about that today and his promise to be with us always and to give us this mission, which is to go tell others about him. So I know this is not the day after Easter and the video says that, so we're just going to act like this is the weekend after Easter, okay? So I'm going to show you a video that reminds us of our mission and then we're going to read some scripture. Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of our Savior. We stood in awe of a Redeemer who has defeated sin, 
conquered death and changed our eternity. Now, the work of the church begins. It's our time to go and tell the world about Jesus, to let them know they're loved, to show them they're cared for, to be the light of Christ to those around us. The story of Easter is not meant to be kept quiet. This gift is not meant to be kept secret. The love of Jesus, His grace and mercy, the power of His resurrection are meant to be shared with our friends, our families, our communities, our nation, and our world. Today, there is light overcoming darkness, hope destroying hopelessness, victory rising out of defeat, and life rising from the ashes. It's time to climb the mountaintops and proclaim in one loud voice, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's never forget that message. I was corrected by a Catholic the other day that they don't say that anymore. I'm like, man, that's like as ancient as the church is, you know? So I'm not, so anyway, maybe us Baptists are going liturgical now. But when you say he is risen, risen that's the tradition of the church going all the way back as far as I can date it. That we would declare this message, not just on Easter Sunday, not just on the weeks that follow, but every single day. When you go to Great Mills High School, when you go to J.F. Taylor, when you go work at Pax River, when you go serve the U.S. Navy, Army. and the Marines, and the Army, and the Air Force, and the Coast Guard, and Space Force. And as we go into whether we work in retail, or we work in finance, or whatever we might do, or we're stay-at-home mom, or stay-at-home dad, Maybe we're unemployed right now. Maybe we're retired. That message never changes. And listen, it's not my job. You know, it's not my, first of all, it's God's job to grow his church. But it needs you. I'm only one. So if we're going to meet our goal of 52 people getting saved this year, guess what you've got to do? <laughs> guess what you've got to do? Shout on the mountaintop, he is risen. You've got to go out there and share the message of Jesus. You've got to tell your friends, listen, I know it's dark, but there's light. I know it may seem hopeless, but there is hope. I know that you may be in such great despair, or you just may be so caught up in your funk. Or Listen, November's going to happen this year, and it's going to get ugly. Nobody knows what I'm talking about, right? And there's going to be things that are going to come our way. And there are going to be things that are going to happen in our world, like 300 missiles. But the hope is still Jesus. The one who reigns supreme is still Christ. No matter what happens in our lives, may we declare that road, that message, and may we pick up where we left last week on this road to Emos. These two men that were walking down this road, and Jesus shows up, and it's Luke 24, But we're going to go pick up the shorter version of this, which is actually in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. Now, before I preach this, I'm going to teach you a little something. Everybody get your Bibles out if you have them. As long as you don't have King James Version, this will be true for every single one of you. King James Version was translated off of older manuscripts. We now have younger manuscripts, which means they're closer to the actual day of writing. And we have found things out that maybe that weren't always... We don't know if for sure they're in there in the original manuscripts. So if you have your Bibles and you go to the Gospel of Mark, I'm going to do this because I want to make it clear to everybody, you can see a line drawn in your Bible that says not found in earlier manuscripts. Who's got that in their Bible? Right there, verse 9, all right? So if you have any modern-day translation, it's going to do that. Even New King James Version should do that. Now, why do they do that? This is really important. It was added at some point. It's not the original language. All right, so it doesn't match with the gospel of Mark. Now, does that mean it's not the word of God? I'm not saying that at all, because I'm going to preach on it today. What I want you to know is probably what happened, whether it was Mark or somebody else, because Mark was the, probably the first gospel written for us. If you go back and date them, the manuscripts, 
Mark was probably the original gospel, and then the other ones came. So what probably happened here is they added certain things that were important to the history of the early church into the gospel of Mark. It would have been early on, still like first century. All right. So who did it? I'm not 100% sure. It could have been Mark. We don't know. But what it was done is clearly it was added. And there's also some funky stuff in there like drinking cyanide and grabbing snakes. We don't do that. Yay, Baptist, amen? Yes, okay. So if you're here today, don't worry. There's not Baptist. There's, not, there's nothing special in the, in, the, in the, there's no Kool-Aid or any of that stuff, okay? So, but there's some stuff in there that's like, man, that's kind of a little weird. But the message of these two men on the road, the message of preaching the gospel, those truths are eternal. And they're in this text. And they actually align with Luke chapter 4. They're going to align with the gospel of John, the ending of gospel of John. And they actually align with Matthew 28, which we will also preach on today. So let's read Mark 16, uh, 12 through 16. It says, after this he appeared, Jesus that is. He appeared in a different form, the two of the men walking on their way into the country. That is a quote, and they're directly connecting to Luke chapter 24. These are the two men on the road to Emos. Verse 13, they went and reported it to the rest, the rest that means the disciples, who did not believe them either. Later he appeared to the eleven, again, remember, Judas is dead, themselves as they were reclining at the table, Jesus rebuked their unbelief and the hardness of their heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he had risen. Then he said to them, go into the world, preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. May God add a blessing to his holy word. So let's look at this text. Picking up from last week. On the road to Emos, Jesus was telling them everything about himself from Moses all the way to the prophets up until that moment right then and there. So these two men are walking along this road to Emos just like they appeared they have been hearing about this tomb. They've heard about Mary finding the tomb empty. They've heard about the, you know, Peter and John going there, and they found that this, you know, it was empty too, and this angel's been saying, hey, Jesus is gone, he's risen, and they don't know what to do with all this information. But for some reason, because Jesus was with them, Jesus eventually revealed himself to them, and they believed. So then they went to tell all the disciples they could find, their friends, and eventually the 11. Now, I don't know why the, the Gospel of Luke says some of them were struggling with it or doubted, but here it makes it sound like all of them were in doubt. Have you ever been in doubt? Have you ever like, man, I just don't know what to believe about that or what to do about that? You know, they were that way too. I mean, here's Jesus. I mean, you don't see people raised from the dead every day. And here's Jesus. They, saw, they know he's dead. They know he's, he's crucified. They know he was in the tomb, and now he's gone, and they just... They're trying to figure it all out in their head. I got any head people here that try to figure everything out in their heads before they can believe or act on something? You know, and Jesus is going to rebuke them and tell them, listen, did you not know this? Why are you having unbelief? I told you I would be glorified. I told you I'd be turned over. I told you I'd be crucified. And I told you that the Son of Man will be raised three days later. But they, they missed it, right? By the way, we would have to. Let's be honest. We can sit back now and go, hey, I know better. I know Jesus is risen. He is risen. Just making sure you're still paying attention. You know, and so he rebukes them. You know, we don't like rebuke, do we? Anybody like getting scolded? Anybody like being told they're wrong? Anybody, I mean, we don't, we don't take that too easily, do we? But Jesus rebuked them. A strong rebuke. Man, how could you have this unbelief? I, I am this, 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 this God that's raised from the dead. I, I am Jesus. I'm right here. Now, we know it took some time for them to figure all this out, but for 40 days, they finally figured it out. And then he gave them this message that we'll pick up in Matthew chapter 28. Go into all the world. Go and preach the gospel. Guess what? Is that just for the 11? <laughs> Be careful here. Who's that for? Is that for your preacher? Anybody's gone to seminary? That's for seminary people, right? Right? That's right. It's for us. It's for all of us. We are to go into the world, and we are to go preach specifically the gospel to all of creation. He leaves nothing out. He tells us that it's our job now, and we're going to look in Matthew in a minute. He says to the nations, and I'll explain why the difference between creation and nation is pretty important. But all of creation, anything that has breath, 
Praise the Lord. It, you know the breath of life is what makes you unique? It gives you life. The men that went to the men's conference yesterday learned that. You're made, every one of us in here, in the image of God, and God breathed life into us. We are distinctly unique in all of creation. All of creation needs redemption. In fact, all of creation groans for the sons and daughters, the Bible teaches us, to be redeemed so that all things can be made new. If you've ever watched Narnia, so the sons and daughters of Adam can be restored. We're the sons and daughters of Adam. We, we are a product of them. And Jesus came to save us and redeem what was lost. And he, that is us. He loves us enough that he came to redeem us. We go preach that gospel. Now look here. Those who believe and are baptized. This is why we're Baptist. I'm going to tell you. This is on every seminary. You go to the Southern Baptist. That This placard's on the floor. Every time I went anywhere in New Orleans Seminary, this is quoted right here. Go into the world and preach the gospel, and those who are saved, those who believe, will be baptized. Now, are you saved by baptism? No. no. I want every, everybody, this is one time you can tell me no. Are you saved by baptism? No. no. Wow. Are you saved by belief? Yes. yes. And there's a little bit more to it. It's just not just that, because you don't actually do it. Jesus did it. All of salvation is about the work that Christ did. And your job is simply to believe. Not to think about it. Not to have doubts about it. Not to be a skeptic about it. Not to sit there and try to figure it all out. But to believe that this God conquered death. That Jesus died for your sins. He paid your debt that you could not pay. And that if you believe in him, you'll have eternal life. Wow. Now, belief in baptism. I love the connection. If you are a believer, and I want to talk to you, listen, I know we have, I love our church because we have so many different denominations present in your previous backgrounds, all right? So listen, I am not here. Thank God if the Catholic Church, Methodist Church, Presbyterian Church, Pentecostal Church, whatever church it was, non-denominational, taught you to love Jesus and follow him. Thank God for that, all right? But we truly believe that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you should, emphasis on should, you should be baptized as a believer. It's that simple. Now, you, you can try to debate, hey, I was sprinkled as a baby, I was this or that. I'm going to tell you, there's no translation ever that says sprinkle or dip or pour. They all mean baptizo and they mean to dunk. So this is why we do this, and we do this as a believer. So what they were doing is they would, get, they would believe in Jesus and be baptized. It was a response to their belief. It was a response to their faith. So if you're in here today and you believe in Jesus and you truly believe in him, there should be a burning in your heart. I want to be baptized in, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I want to be a part of this, this process that Jesus created and started. And baptism is part of that. Now look right here. I love that it disconnects this. It says, those who do not believe are condemned. Notice what it doesn't say. Those who do not believe and have not been baptized. The connection of condemnation has nothing to do with whether you've been baptized. So if somebody dies and they've not been baptized and they really believe in Jesus, they're in heaven. But they should be baptized if they have time and have the means of doing it. Now, in here, in this road, I would say is this. Those who do not believe, in other words, they don't place their faith in Jesus. The only thing that can condemn you is the lack of faith in Christ. Not like you like struggle with your faith. I'm talking like, I don't believe Jesus is the son of God. I do not believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. I do not believe that Jesus died on the cross. You know, if those type of things you, you express and that's what you really believe and you're totally just, uh, totally void of Christ in your life, that is the unbelief that could condemn a person to hell. All right, so let's just get that straight. So if you believe in Jesus, you should have confidence in your faith. Anyone who believes is saved, and hopefully you've been baptized as well with that. And now you have this mission. On the 40 days, not only did Jesus want to compel them and convince them that he was risen, he wanted to give us our mission. And our mission is to go tell others about Jesus. Now I want everybody, you're going to crick your neck. Every time you walk into this room, you walk underneath a banner, and every time you leave this room, you walk under a banner. Every single time. Go ahead and look to the back of the room. 
you're going to walk through that sign. And I'm not talking the exit sign because you want to go to lunch. <laughs> Be disciples, make disciples. That is our mission. Now, when we created that mission statement, we just didn't make it up. We got it from Jesus. This is exactly what Jesus wants you to do. You're to be a disciple, which is follower of Jesus, and then you are to go make others disciples, which means followers of Jesus, wherever you go in your journey with Christ. So Matthew 28, 16 through 20, we're going to pick up where Mark leaves off, and we're going to pick up with the full picture of what Jesus probably would have said. This is probably getting close to his ascension. And next week, we're going to talk about the ascension. And then the week after that, we're going to talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So that's where we're going with this short sermon series on the 40 days. But when you look right here, probably sometime towards he's getting close to the end of his 40 days walking with them, and he's going to give them his final advice. And his final advice is that they got to carry on the mission that he's left them. By the way, has that ever changed? No. That banner could fly at every church. Be disciples, make disciples. Every single one of us, that is our commission. Every, listen, every single Christian, that is your banner. You're a disciple, and you've been called to make disciples. Let's look at the scripture. Listen to the word of God. Then the 11, remember, Judas is dead. They haven't picked the next uh, disciple yet. So the 11 disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them to. Now, we honestly don't know what mountain that is. Is it Mount of Olives? We're, we're not sure. But if it's close to the ascension, it might be the Mount of Olives, but we're not sure. But wherever he's directed them to go, they're going out to the mountain range with him. And when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. Even after 40 days, they're still like, is this really Jesus? You know, I mean, you know, I've touched him. I've ate with him. I've walked with him. I've heard him. I'm still, wow. I, I, I am baffled by that, by the way. But some worshipped, some doubted. And then Jesus came to remove any doubt. He wants to make it clear to them. And he says, here I am, look, it's me. You're not just looking at me from afar. I'm really in front of you. Now let me tell you the big deal here. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. May God add a blessing to his holy word. So to us in here today, one, we act on the authority of Christ. Yesterday we learned that authority is really connected to responsibility. We have the responsibility to carry on the authority that God has given us, and the authority we have is to share the gospel. Did you notice that? There's, there's no other authority. But all authority belongs to who? On heaven and earth. Not U.S. Navy. Don't even say it. Not any other branch of the military. Not any government. None. No authority is greater than Christ. All authority, if God, create, if God is really the creator God and he created everything and he says, I've given all authority now to Christ. Wow. Everything in heaven and everything on earth is under the authority of Jesus Christ. And he's extending that authority to us as a responsibility to share the gospel. The only authority I actually have as a pastoral authority is the word of God in preaching. To preach over your lives. To make sure we're walking with the word of God. To make sure we're walking with Jesus. To make sure that we're having good doctrine in our church. To make sure that we are filled with grace and truth because that's what Jesus came to do. And if we're doing those things, that's the authority and that all of us should walk under that authority of Christ. We should all sit under the authority of the word of God because the word of God is where we find out what Jesus thinks and what God thinks. And so we, we submit to that. We come underneath that authority with responsibility. What are we responsible to do? To share the gospel. To proclaim the truth. To preach to the ends of the earth. And so what he gives us this authority, he's telling, he's got all authority, he's reminding them, I've conquered death. If he's conquered death, does he have authority over death? Yes. What's the wages of sin? Death. death. He has paid your wage. And he conquered it. So now he can give you eternal life. That is the gospel. If we believe that, that changes everything. You won't find that in Muhammad. You won't find that in Buddha. You won't find that in Gandhi. 
you will find that in no other person and no other religion. Only the Christian faith lived as followers of Jesus, not a religion. That's a huge distinction there. Some people can be Christian by religion, but we should be, we should be Christian by relationship. Does everybody understand that? There's a huge difference. I don't want you just to follow a bunch of rules. I want you to follow Jesus. And in doing that, you'll keep his commands. And in doing that, yes, you'll, you'll probably, you'll, you'll, you should be changed and be different than the world. All right? But you're not here to make a philosophy or religion. We're here to follow a person who is Jesus Christ. Because all authority belongs to him. So we are on mission for him. And the Great Commission is this. He says to go. Go where? To all the world. But specifically here. Go where? What's it say? What's different between Mark and Matthew? Somebody say it. Not creation. What's Matthew say? Come on. Y'all don't have your Bibles out? Go to the nations. Who do we think has authority? No, come on now. Let's be honest. Yes, that's true. This is true. It is God. We know that. But we think nations have power. We think governments have power. As you go back and look through history. That's, that's how we think. And let, by the way, we are to subject ourselves to the authorities when they're for our good. All right? Listen, there's a stop sign out there for your good. You need to honor it. I watched some of you drive in here today. <laughs> you know, the stoplights are for your good. And by, even when you get a ticket, sometimes it's for your good. I hope no one experienced that today. I did not. I'm just confessing, okay? But... If you have, man, I always pray for somebody when those lights are behind them. I said, Lord, please be with them. I know they just had a bad day. <laughs> you know, but there are rules sometimes. When you call 911, do you, do you want EMS to go? Do you want the fire station to have a fire truck to put out a fire? Yes. Do you want a police officer to show up if there's somebody threatening you? Yes. For our good. We submit to those things. All right. But they are not the highest authority. God is. And so when we do that and we take this message to the nations, he's saying, not only do I rule creation in Mark, I rule the nations. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. They can either do it now, but they're going to do it. They don't get it accredited to them. If they die, only on this side of eternity, when we bow a knee, does it get credited to us as belief. So may we place our faith in Christ today under his authority, and then our mission is to do what? Not only to go to the nations, but we go and we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what do we do? We make disciples. Go into the nations, make disciples. People that look like Jesus. And you can't make someone look like Jesus unless who looks like Jesus? Everybody say me. Me. We sometimes we get in the way of people becoming a disciple. Sometimes the church gets in the way because we do some stupid things. I'm not saying this church, although, I mean, we're not subject to failure either, but we, people do stupid things. And sometimes we can bring reproach to Christ because of our behavior. All right, so we want to live by grace and truth. We want, we want to be more like Jesus. And the more we're like Jesus, hopefully people want to be more like Jesus I don't want you to be like me. You can thank me later. <laughs> I want you to be like Jesus. I hope whatever good is in me, it's from Jesus. And I hope you can forget about all the bad, okay? Amen? Amen? I tell that to my mom all the time. And as bad as I was, she tries to tell me I wasn't really that bad. I'm like, oh yeah, well, I guess I was. You know, so all of us have that, and so we want to be more like Jesus, a follower of Christ. So under his authority... We're making disciples, and how do we prove that we make disciples? This is key. We baptize them. This is why we have so much emphasis on it. Listen, how do I know if you as a grown person have made a public profession of faith, how do I know that you're really sincere? Hopefully you will act on it. And you will act on it by following through with a believer's baptism. Can you do that as a baby? Now look, all my kids got baptized pretty young, but they understood the concept. You know, they understood sin, they understood Jesus died on the cross, they understood he was alive, and they understood that they needed to be in the church and be discipled and learn to follow Christ. If somebody gets 
saved young, it then becomes our responsibility and parents' responsibilities to continue to invest in that child so that they're discipled. By the way, when someone's even older, when they've come to Jesus Christ, it becomes our responsibility to do what? Invest in that person so that they will follow Jesus Christ. By the way, that's your task, not mine. So all these people that have gotten baptized, I've got a question, I'm gonna, ready? I'm not a boxer, but I'm gonna hit you in the, below the belt. Who here has grabbed any of them and started discipling them? Wow. Is that just my job? Whose job is that? I want you to think back. Oh my goodness, who's gotten saved? Who's gotten baptized? Realize who, who can I invest in? Who can I go have that cup of coffee with? It doesn't have to be an elaborate thing. It can just be, I'm here for you. And if you don't understand anything in the scriptures, come to me. Here's my email. Here's my phone number. If you're struggling with anything, or if I can help you, or here's a better thing. Not all of you go to Wednesday night discipleship groups, but you should. There you go, Tim. I plugged it. You should, you should come, and if you do, you know what you should be doing? Come with me. Come with me. Come to class with me. Come to class with me, and I'll sit with you. Come to worship with me for the next two months, and I'll sit with you. If you have any questions about the sermon, I'm here to help you. So go through that process where we are sharing Jesus Christ with each other, and we're investing in making disciples. That's our job. Following through the baptism, and the baptism is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is really important. The triune God. This is not, it is just about Jesus. You get saved through Jesus, but Jesus directs us to the Father. And then, by the way, then the Spirit will direct us to Jesus. And in a moment, we're going to find the importance of the Holy Spirit. So baptizing, and then teaching them all that he's commanded. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. Everything God commanded us in the word of God, we are supposed to share with one another. Does anybody have this whole book figured out yet? Man, did you hear what James Villanningham was reading up here? I got the wrong, I got the right guy to read that today, didn't I? Man with that deep voice. I'm gonna boil you in a pot and do all this stuff. Wow, wow, that was awesome, man. That did not happen, I mean, that really... That happened, could you imagine a woman, no, no offense women, that just would not have been the same. I'm going to rip your skin off your flesh and break your bones. I mean, wow. I was like, even like, did I really pick that scripture today? And yeah, but, yeah. And then as it went down, I thought, and then he started talking about, this is what I'm going to do to you if you're a false prophet. This is what I'm going to do to those, those of you that don't honor me. You, you people that are my priest that have disgraced my word. I'm going to do that to you, man. Could, man, God would get pastor's attention real quick, wouldn't he? Any preacher out there. So baptizing, teaching truth, teaching God's word. And listen, the greatest commandment is Matthew 22. I don't know you know it. Love God and love others. Look what's over here. Our first value as a church, by the way, if you're new, all these four banners spell out LPBC, and they are our values. We want to make sure that they are actualized in our church. And the first one is loving God and loving each other. If you love me, Jesus said, you'll keep my commandments. Not you'll keep my commandments to prove you love me, but because you love me, you want to walk like me. Because you love me, you want to share those things with each other. Because you love me, you want to be more like me. Because you love me, you want to love other people. Wow, now loving other people doesn't make everything's okay with other people. It just means you love people, amen? By the way, I love you, and trust me, not everything's okay. And guess what? You love me, and not everything's okay with me either. But we love each other because Jesus loves us, and he calls us to love each other. Love is the greatest thing ever enacted, agape love, a love that doesn't seek its own but seeks the good of the other. That is true love. May we love each other that way. And then he gets to this. Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. What's the end of the age? Most scholars would tell you that we live in the church age now. The church age started when? He is risen. There you go. All right. Jesus is in motion to launch the church from that moment forward. 
He set motions and set in in motion for those 40 days. Then there was a pause. Then Pentecost happened. And when we get there in two weeks, we're going to talk about the birthing of the church. The church was launched with the intent of Christ to send out to make disciples. So the church has been promised that he's going to be present. He's with us. He's promised us. Now, how is he going to do that? Through his Holy Spirit. The Spirit that was poured out for 2,000 years, he is wit so far, and the church age has not ended yet. Until Jesus comes back, which I am hoping happens soon. All right? There's one excited person up front. Okay. I am ho- really, I'm just done with the world. You know, I, I really am, but I understand I live in it. I understand that God still got us here. And if we tarry on another 1,000 years, it's another 1,000 years. But his promise is this. I'm with you. I've not left you. I've not abandoned you. I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to go out into a world that's hostile. I'm going to ask you to share my gospel. I'm going to ask you to use your authority even to tell the nations, you know what? Not to be like rude. God's kingdom is greater than your kingdom. And if I submit to you, it's because I submit to God. All right? So we need to make sure we have our priorities right. This doesn't give you the right to be a rebellion. All right, but it gives us the right to say if our government's wrong, the kingdom of God is greater. All right, so make sure we can distinguish those things. So as we are here, we're part of this kingdom. We're baptizing, we're teaching, and then he's with us. So if you can make a hamburger because it's getting close to lunch. You got the two buns, the authority and his presence. And in between what you have are the th- things we need to do. Disciples, baptize, and teach. We do those three things between his authority and his presence. He's given us his authority. He's given us his presence. He's given us our mission. Your job and my job now is to go, to go make disciples, to go baptize them, and to go teach them. And as we do that, he has promised there will be things that he will do. We do not need to doubt. We do not need to have unbelief. We do not need to have hardness of hearts. We do need, need not need to fret. And again, I go back to that text. Jesus told us, there will be trouble in this world. But my peace I give you. And by the way, it's because I've conquered the world. So whatever this world can do to you, what will it profit a person if they lose their soul but gain the whole world? What's it profit you? Nothing. Zero. That's not what we're here to do. We're not here to gain the things of the world. We're here to to gain the things of the kingdom of God. And so as we preach this gospel, it actually changes us. As we share this gospel and we live in Jesus' presence, it should change us and make us less like the world and more like him. So asking this question to each of you, go, that's actually the command. Are you a gospel opportunist? And do you look for gospel opportunities? I worked harder on that. Go, T.O., you guys get it, okay? Are you a gospel opportunist? And are you looking for gospel opportunities? If you are, I'm going to tell you one thing that's going to happen. You're going to find somebody you need to share Jesus with. Guarantee it. So don't, don't pray that prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray that prayer with me. Don't pr- ask God to make you a gospel opportunist unless you're ready to seize a gospel opportunity. Because people need Jesus. That will never change. Ever, 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 ever. So I pray as we look at this, conclude this, that today we look at our lives in those 40 days, Jesus established this commission to all believers, all believers of all generations, of all times throughout the church age. Over 2,000 years, over 730,000 days, this mission has existed. That's a long time. And by the way, if it requires it, it will go another 730,000 days. The message will never change. If you're in here today and you've never received the gospel of Jesus Christ, you've never believed, you've never professed it, you've never come forward, maybe you've never been baptized by a believer's baptism, what are you waiting on? Today you can make that declaration. Today you can say, I'm ready to be baptized. I talked to somebody this week I've talked to, Evan came up last week. Since he came up, I can call him out by name. And he's moving towards baptisms. There's a couple, all of y'all talking to me. Let's do this thing. Let's make it. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Because he is risen. Let's pray. Father God, 
We have a story to tell to the nation that is true. As we sing these words today, may we be mindful, each and every one of us, of our responsibility under your authority. May we be mindful of your compelling teaching to tell us to go. May we know that we have that authority, we have that message, we have that responsibility, may we take it seriously, and may we know that you're with us. And today, if someone has not received the gospel, the gospel was preached, the death, burial, and resurrection of you, Jesus. If someone needs to receive you as Lord and Savior, follow through with a believer's baptism or whatever it may be, maybe they need to repent of sin or maybe they need to recommit their lives to you and maybe they need to join this church. God, I pray you move people to respond to you. I pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Let's stand and sing. You come as the Lord leads. right in the middle right now. Billy, they will see you though. If you're going to leave here understanding that you need to be a gospel opportunist that shares the gospel and looks for gospel opportunities and you're going to commit that today to God. Raise your hand. Amen. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you for those that raised their hand. I pray you pray for the one that made the decision. And I pray for the one that's come forward already. Lord, we're grateful for your movement in this church. We're grateful that you've given us this great commission. May we honor it. May we be responsible to that authority you've extended to us. And may we go into our world 
Global's noble, but there's no place like home. Let's start here in Southern Maryland. God, do something that only you could do. Bringing more people to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing one more verse. friends. There I'm on. Okay, Glenda is good friends with Jerusha. And guess what? They share the same birthday. Literally, and year. And they went to school together. And she has moved back here and she came looking for them. And uh, she is wanting to join this church now. And so I'm so glad that friends from way back can come back together. That's how God works. Amen? It, no matter what. And so uh, Glenda has come up by her own free will to join our church. She's been a Christian and been baptized. Not going to tell how long ago. But she believes in Jesus with all her, all her heart. And she just asked me a few questions this week. She was grilling me. She goes, now you're going to preach the word, right? Uh, yes, I'm going to preach the word. Yeah. And she was making sure I was going to preach the word. And so anyway, we are so grateful to have you here. And all of us that embrace Glenda into the family of God, say amen. amen. All right. You're stuck with us now. Wow, that's a good thing. So she's going to stay up here. We'll have her get up, and you can come up and greet her. Uh, before we leave, though, um, I had a few minutes. Now I don't, but we're going to, I've been getting in trouble. I've got a lot of things to pass out. So I think I saw so many people. Abigail Jackson, come on up here. Stephen, where you at, Stephen? I saw you, Steve. Come on up, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. Catherine Marchbank, come on up. So here are spiritual gifts. I don't want you to know I want to emphasize this. Make sure you're taking your spiritual gifts. Here's some young people taking their spiritual gifts. Every single person should have taken their spiritual gifts. So, Abigail, your spiritual gifts are serving and giving. And I don't know about the second one, pastoring. Whoa, 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 whoa. But that means shepherding the people that are underneath you, okay? So good job. There's yours. Catherine. Your spiritual gifts were serving, evangelism, we have a trouble again, pastoring, yes, but there you go, so shepherd the people God's put underneath you, and then we have Stephen, he has his prophecy, y'all trying to get my job, pastoring, and apostleship, so amen, let's hear it for these guys, thank you all, God bless you all, go ahead. And then I have a few baptism certificates. And by the way, I'm very delinquent. So over the next, this is what I have to do. So um, it's my fault, not my staff's fault. It's my fault. I take the total hit on that. I've not been doing this. So Alex Johnston, come on up here. Baptism certificate. And that was, y'all can clap for him. There you go. Ashe, Ashe, come on up. Here you go, brother. Stay up here, man. Congratulations. Ashe. Demetrius, come on up. You thought you were getting off the hook too, didn't you, man? Yeah. And that's all we're going to do today, but I just want to continue to do this, and we'll go through these. Um, heck, let's see what we got. Samantha Chase, she's, is she here today? No, I don't see her today. Okay. I uh, don't see him. Let's see if I got anybody else. All right, that's all that's on the top that's here today. So I just want to congratulate you, your example to us all. These are three of the people that I told you, just recently got baptized. So next week, G uh, Tim's going to be up here, and you all all have to come back because we have another gift for you all next week. Uh, yeah, you didn't know that? I'm just going to keep you coming up here every single week, Meech. <laughs> We're on a roll now, brother, right? 
So anyway, um, make sure you congratulate them, see them walking around, make sure you're ministering to them and you're investing in them and their young walk in faith. All right, let's end in a blessing. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you, lift his countenance upon you, and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name, amen.